Good morning, everyone. And uh, welcome to React Native U. Wrocław, which is a headquarters of Colstack and the capital of React Native, at least for the next two days. I'm Łukasz, I needed to look that up, and I'm super excited to get this party started. We have a super conference ahead of us. We have a line of amazing speakers and talks, and including Ricardo and Alex from Mera, who will join me during this keynote, and they will talk about the things that Barry said, the newest and greatest in React Native world. Before that happens, uh, we need some context, though. So let me tell you about how React Native rose to cross-platform default over the last five years. This is 2023, and we are all pretty stoked about React Native. In my opinion, it's without a doubt a go-to solution for businesses small and big. These are not just empty words. If you look around you, you will see over 500 people from all around the globe. Like Barry said, this is the biggest React Native conference in Europe and possibly in the world. We have developers, we have tech and business leaders from various industries. We have active community members and open source contributors. And yet, not everyone is convinced especially on the business side, because I still get asked about this 2018 blog post from Airbnb. Does it sound familiar to you? <laughs> For those that don't know, this is a series of five different articles describing Airbnb's experience with React Native as of 2018. Airbnb gave the React Native community a lot of libraries and knowledge, but in 2018, they decided to stick to native. Part four in this series, Sunsetting React Native, is the most often quoted of the series. And this sure made its mark on the discussion about the business readiness of React Native. Is it still valid, though? Uh, don't worry, I'm not gonna, I don't want to speak too much about Airbnb and the article. I do want to use it, though, as a starting point, as a framework for me to discuss this business readiness uh, in 2023. So let's get started. First of all, there are a lot of things in this article that I agree with, even now. Those, are, those were valid in 2018 and are still valid in 2023, and probably will be valid in the future. And that's because organizational concerns have no expiry date. Struggling with things like innovation and leadership team composition and collaboration, and introducing new technology and upskilling your team, those are common. For Airbnb and others, our clients included, incorporating React Native in their tech stack is synonymous with a lot of organizational challenges. And it doesn't mean that those businesses fail it just means that businesses simply face organizational, organizational challenges all the time, and these challenges can be addressed. In fact, our business and partners, uh, our partners and clients uh, talk with me about them in our series on our podcast, The React Native at Scale, where we discuss those things. To conclude this part, just let me say that all five articles have the following disclaimer. And uh, in short, 
Airbnb, they never told us that we should all just switch from React Native to Native. They basically said, here is our experience, and you should make your own research and make your own decisions uh, based on your business case. And this will be something that you will hear throughout this conference as well. OK, organizational ch challenges gone. But while organizational challenges are constant, the state of technology is not. And before 20, 2018, React Native could prove not business ready for a lot of products. There were things that, as a business, you would expect to work out of the box, and yet they did not. But the community has been working hard to fill in these gaps and take React Native to the next level. The basic issues have been resolved uh, to the point that developers working with React Native today don't have to suffer from those. And businesses adopting it can rely on React Native as a production-ready framework, or at the very least, have the tools and knowledge to make the issues just a minor inconvenience significantly outweighed by React Native benefits. The framework is in a completely different place today. It is backed by the biggest names in IT industry, Meta and Microsoft. It is constantly improved by the core team and companies like Callstack that recognize the value of open source. If we have whole teams contributing to pushing the improvement of React Native. This shows in the number of big, big products on that page. And there's yet to come. React Native is also supported by a huge community of library authors, maintainers, who keep adding the value to the framework. I can see many familiar cases, uh, faces in the audience right now. So I want to thank you for making my job easier. And I think it's time we give ourselves a round of applause. Thank you. It's thanks to you, the community, React Native has become the cross-platform default and is so widely adopted. It's thanks to you that downloads of the newest version rose to 40% in just three months. To tell you more about the technical side of things and the newest and shiniest things in React Native, I want to ask to the stage Alex and Ricardo from Meta to tell you more about the new release. Thank you. And thank you, Colstack, for having us here. Um, so as Lucas, Lucas was saying, we are here to show you what's about to be released in 073, because we are not stopping uh, to develop new stuff. Uh, but first, a couple of words about ourselves. I'm Ricardo. I'm a software engineer at Meta. My background is in iOS engineering, and I'm working uh, bringing the new stuff to the, that we are developing internally to the open source community, especially right now, working on the new architecture. Cool. Hi, everyone. I'm Alex. I'm a software engineer at Meta, working alongside Ricardo. I have a background in web and React Native development, and I'm working on the React Developer Experience team. And I'm part of the release crew for 73. So React Native 073 has not been released yet, but we want to show with you what share with you what, what is about to come. Uh, and the highlight for 073 will be a new developer experience for every one of you. So Alex will talk about that in a few seconds, basically. But there are huge things coming up, so we are very excited to share them with you. Then we have some usual platform updates that are 
common after every uh, release. We are bringing Kotlin and um, this new modern language to React Native, finally, I would say. <laughs> and then we have a bunch of updates related to the new architecture, which is still in an experimental phase, but we want to get your feedback as early as possible. So with that, I will leave the stage to Alex for the developer experience improvements. Thanks, Ricardo. So the goal of the developer experience team is around enabling React developers to get from thought to execution as fast as possible. For this React Native release, we've been laser focused on improvements to Metro and debugging. For Metro, we have stable Synlink support. Early this year, we announced initial experimental support for following Symlinks in Metro via the resolver.unstable enable Symlinks config option. In conjunction with the watch folders option, Metro can support a wider range of JavaScript project layouts for use cases such as monorepo setups, linked node modules packages during development, and modern package managers such as NPM, PMPM. <laughs> Metro's Symlink support has been designed to be fast and correct, with Symlinks represented in Metro's in-memory file map and dependency graph. And it's supported on all desktop platforms with and without Watchmen. In React Native 73, Symlinks will be enabled by default. And building on making this capability stable in Metro, we're completing the picture with out-of-the-box support for Xcode and Android builds in React Native template projects. With this work, we're more than happy to be finally closing issue number one for Metro. <laughs> A massive shout out to Rob Hogan, who's in the crowd today, for the huge amount of work that's been involved in this. We continue to work towards highly demanded features in Metro. We've moved the Babel preset from Metro to React Native to allow more targeted transforms for faster builds and smaller bundles. We're improving ergonomics with better docs, more actionable errors, and support for .cgs Metro config. And we've revamped Metro's file map cache for faster startup and resolution. Now, let's take a look at some major debugging improvements in React Native 73. Debugging is a key area of improvement for us, and we're making the first steps towards our long-term investment plans in this space. In React Native 73, we're introducing a new debugging experience for React Native. We've updated the dev menu with a one-click action to our new first-party debugger front end, replacing Flipper. This workflow is zero install and works when you have either Google Chrome or Microsoft Edge installed on your system. And this new debugger can be triggered from React Native CLI as well by using the J hotkey. So what are we looking at? This is our new first party debugger front end for React Native. It's based on Chrome DevTools and features a customized UI and new welcome pane. We've curated the available panels and menus in the interface to match the debugging features that React Native supports today. In React Native 73, this begins with a narrower set of debugging features focused on JavaScript. We have the specific aim of offering experience where what you see works. We intend for this feature set to grow over time. Since our debugger is based on Chrome DevTools, we have the future capability to support the rich and comprehensive debugging features offered by the web. We believe that adopting extending web tooling will be the quickest and most sustainable way to provide a more useful debugging experience for the most users. And this is aligned with React's vision for cross-platform app development. But we're not only shipping a new front end. The Hermes team have been hard at work on making improvements to the Hermes engine that support better debugging. An exciting feature here is background console logs. This means that while your application is running in development mode and without a debugger connected, Hermes now collects all console.log calls in the background. Then, when you open the debugger, buffered logs that were recorded are then sent to the debugger client when it connects. It's just like web. So here's your regular reminder to use Hermes. It's the best way to directly debug JavaScript on device today, and we are committed to providing a first-class debugging experience for Hermes in React Native. With all these changes, we're also going to revisit and restructure our debugging docs. This should result in a more helpful starting point for React Native developers, where we clearly document and 
all recommended debugging tooling and supported features in 73. We're excited to be partnering closely with Hermes and Expo in tackling this problem space, in addition to our partners in the debugging working group. And we're aligned on a shared set of solutions. In particular, Expo made the switch to Chrome DevTools earlier this year, and we have upcoming work to share a new common debugging core between frameworks. For more info on using these experiences today within Expo, check out Cedric Van Putten's talk, Debugging Should Be Easier. In a nutshell, we're all in on the Chrome DevTools protocol. Let's quickly go a tiny bit deeper with a sneak peek of our debugging plans beyond the next release, which we're going to be enabled by some major architectural improvements to our debugger server later this year. The new UI we have is a starting point, and in the 73 release, we'll ship with a simple but stable feature set. Looking forward, we want to expand the features offered in our first party debugger. First, we want to ship a unified debugger by embedding React DevTools and enabling DevTools connections with multiple app instances. Secondly, we want to integrate the network debugger, another great capability offered today by browsers that will be incredibly useful to the majority of app developers. We're starting to break ground on this work today and are targeting rollout of some of these features next year. This is all in the future, and this is very exciting. Back to this release. With all these changes, we're kicking off the deprecation of React Native's built-in integration with Flipper as the default debugging tool. <laughs> In React Native 73, we're announcing this deprecation, and nothing will immediately change for users opening Flipper and connecting it to React Native apps. In 074, new projects will no longer include Flipper's integration code by default which will also simplify the native dependency setup for React Native apps. After this date, Flipper will remain available as a standalone product. Um, and for Flipper native plugins, yeah, we emphasize that Flipper will remain available today for continued use. That's DevX in React Native 073. Back to Ricardo. Thank you, Alex, for the exciting news in the debugging world. Um, so, coming back to what is inside uh, React Native 73, we're going to start with some updates on the platform and on the runtime. So, for the platform updates, uh, we are preparing our framework for the new version of the um, operating system. So, we are preparing that for Android 14 and for iOS 17. This will bring in some changes in uh, part of the infrastructure. So for example, for Android, we're going to move from JDK 11 to 17. We are bumping the uh, Android uh, Gradle plugin and other changes. And for iOS, we are just bumping minimum version from 12.4 to 13.4. 13 uh, especially for Android, we kind of expect to have some changes in your configuration files. So please use the upgrade helper. It's a great tool that will help you update your app with these changes without Hopefully, with not, not a lot of hassle. Uh, if we talk about changes in the platforms, we are bringing Kotlin to the template. This allows us to uh, rewrite our main activity and main application files from Java to Kotlin, saving almost 30% of the space um, of the um, code size. And this is not just it uh, is just the tip of the iceberg, as you may have seen in the React Native repository, a couple of umbrella issues which are asking for the help of the community to help us migrate the framework from Java to Kotlin. This will bring a lot of benefits for the, of the new language, like uh, more modern approach to development, and it will be beneficial for everyone. I want to sneak in a little update. Uh, this is not really user-facing, but is a great uh, contribution from the community. 073 will be the first version of React Native that is using end-to-end -end testing solution in CI, powered by uh, WebDriver IO, Appium, and Jest 2 e And I want a uh, uh, shout out to Coldstack and Microsoft because they basically implemented that for the whole community. So <laughs> thank you very much for that. Now, moving to the new, new architecture features. 
which again, I want to remind you that is experimental. We are not advising you to use it in production right now, but please, if you have time um, and you can try the new architecture, please do and give us feedback because this will be the future for React Native and we need your help to make sure that it will work in all the uh, use cases. Um, but we are pretty excited because it will be the beginning of like new stage for React Native. So uh, to understand why we are bringing in the runtime an, an update on the runtime, we want to review how a React Native application works in the old architecture. We have our JavaScript files that communicates to the bridge with React Native uh, library and native code. And then we have native components and native modules that use the bridge to communicate back and forth JavaScript and native. The new architecture is all about burning the bridge, which is a bottleneck. And we are introducing the runtime, a new component that will allow you to uh, not use the bridge and be more efficient in the communication between JavaScript and native code. But now you can ask us like, okay, but my native modules and native components are using the bridge to communicate back and forth. So do I have to update all of them at the same time? The answer is no, because with 073, we are also releasing some interop layer. Again, experimental thing. There, are, there will be rough edges and we need your help to uh, consolidate them. But basically this interop layer will work as a proxy for the bridge and you will, like, the expectation is not to update everything in one suite, but incrementally. The second update of the new architecture is related to view configs. To understand what view configs are, we need to step back a little and see how view components work in the old architecture. In the old architecture, every view component has two parts, the view and the view manager, which is used to register uh, the view props in the JavaScript uh, runtime. Well, in the new architecture, we want to simplify a little bit the stuff for everyone. So we are removing the view manager and we are replacing them with uh, static view configs that are run in JavaScript. And you know what? You don't have to write them because we'll have CodeGen write them for you. So one less thing to write if you have native view components. Um, so these are the updates that we are going to bring in uh, 0.73, a huge improvement in the VEX, platform updates, a modern language for our template, and a few new features for the new architecture. And with that, I want to call back my fellow presenter on stage. And thank you, everyone, for being here. And Lukas, you want to open the... Uh, yeah, I just want to welcome everyone in Brotoa. Hi. Let's have a great time for the next two days. Thank you.